Hello everyone, and today what we're going to be doing is having a look at a Dark Magician. Not for any reason in particular, uh, it's just that it's a deck that we were recently playing here. Now, what I will say before we do anything else is I want to thank everyone who showed up for the first ever Twitch stream that we did. It was very, very fun that we had a good handful of people in there. Uh, we were playing some, a lot of the duels you'll be seeing here are actually from that stream. We'll be commenting over them and we had a whole load of fun with everyone there so thank you so much for everyone and anyone who showed up uh, again these things are going to be scheduled a lot more regularly after having such a successful first launch so do look out for that uh, we will also have uh, stream highlights clips things like that posted in youtube shorts and tiktok basically as soon as we're getting because we're, we're launching a tiktok and stuff but that's get to that later uh, but yeah, no, thank you very, very much. And we hit our weekly target there. So at the time of the recording, we are sitting at 218 subs. So thank you so, so much for the support. I knew we could get there by the end of the week. Not a problem. Y'all are the best. Uh, again, we're going to be aiming for 300 by the end of next week would be a bit of a stretch. And I understand that. So maybe 260 to 270 by the end of next week. Uh, and we'll be happy sort of writing this train of progress. Again, thank you so much to anyone who has already subscribed. And if you haven't, then you're watching the content. Why not? Uh, it's free, it doesn't cost you anything, and you get to see more Master Duel content as it comes out, so do consider it, and the button is down there whenever you want. It, we're playing pretty standard Dark Magician, very similar to our last list. We did play around with the Adventure Engine. Uh, I believe a couple of the games were, were, we'll be showing today will have the Adventure Engine in it. I'll be real, it's not that good in this deck. Uh, it's just super clunky. It really limits the, the uh, art by control that uh, like a simple trap card brings to the deck for whatever reason. Uh, your only real normal summon you would use in the deck would be Magician's Rod, so I thought on that basis the Adventure Engine would be good. It certainly has its moments, uh, but overall, just the consistency of having more trap cards, more controlled Solemn Judgments, things like that, brought a lot more to the deck than the Adventure Engine did, and that was accredited through evidence in the gameplay. If you want to see all of the full, un -raw, like raw, unedited footage, hop over to Twitch, it's all recorded on the VOD there. Uh, but yeah, in general, this version of it performed way, way better than the Adventure version. The main difference between this version and our last version of the deck being, of course, the addition of the safe lock, which was beneficial. We actually didn't really summon Dagda very often, but we were hard drawing into safe. And that's, that suits us down to the ground, to be honest. Generally, how it will work is you'll have two different boards, depending on if you can put out two monsters or if you can put out three monsters. If you can put out two monsters, you will go into Dag. Uh, sorry, if you put out three monsters, you'll go into Dagda and then Preda Plant. If you can put out two monsters, you'll just go straight into Preda Plant for a Tanaconda. That's your turn one, plus you set any back row you have, play your Dark Magician cards. Relatively straightforward. We'll cover off uh, an actual profile at the end. For anyone who doesn't know Dark Magician, I'll cover it off again at the end of a detailed profile. But having said that, again, thank you so much for subscribing and let's get into game number one. All right, kicking off with game number one here. We're going to go first here. We're going to, we don't have very much we can proactively do in this hand. We're going to discard a Dark Magician to summon the Apprentice Illusion Magician. Uh, we do get hit with Imperm, so we don't get to search. But to be perfectly honest, I will take that uh, eating, it up, eating up an Imperm for that any day of the week. So I'm very, very happy with that turn. Uh, we do have the Maxi, we have the Droplet, and we have Imperm. So it's not as if we don't have any interruption whatsoever. Our opponent's going to go for Dragon Man Hospitality. So we're going to Maxi that, basically. Uh, so now, now we're in a very, very strong position. Our opponent's going to summon out Ernest, and the nurse is going to basically uh, send the tin heck, to, tin heck to the graveyard as well to boost up the uh, nurse dragon. Basically, he's trying, he's trying to fill his graveyard here with materials. We maxied him, so he couldn't do very much in the way of combos. We're going to send the Dark Magician girl to the graveyard to special summon the Dark Magician off of our souls. We'll switch the uh, apprentice to attack mode, and we'll set our judgment. Again, it doesn't look like much that's on the board, but I mean, look at the face down cards. Now we're going to go into Link Spider using Link Spider on our, and our Apprentice Illusion Magician. We're then going to summon a Deep Predator Plant Verte Anaconda. Two effect monsters bring out our DP at the cost of 2000 life. So fantastic. We've got DP, we've got three massive negates there face down on the field. So we're sitting very, very well. Main phase one for our opponent. <laughs> We get Kaiju. This happened so often. It was such a pain. We get Kaiju, so our DP is gone. But you know what? We still have uh, some materials here. Given that that Kaiju was his last card, we're going to Solemn Judgment the summon of that just so we can keep the highest attack monster on the board here. Uh, we draw into Eternal Soul, which is fantastic. We'll set the Eternal Soul, use our Celestial to draw two. Our opponent's really running low on resources here. They've only got that nurse to keep themselves safe. We're going to summon out another, the Dark Magician Girl this time so we can summon the Souls later. 
We're going to go in the IP Mask Arena, and then we're going to use Mask Arena and Verte Anaconda to go into Access Code Talker. Our opponent's got 5,500 life. Access Code Talker, banish the Mask Arena, or sorry, banish the Predator Plant Verte Anaconda, pop the Nurse, swing for 27, swing for 43. That is game. So showing off the Access Code Talker OTK there. Uh, again, this is sort of why I valued this build over the uh, adventure build, purely because that, that back row control, yes, we didn't have loads on our field at any given time, but we constantly had two or three active Negeus to go into whenever we wanted. It would have been extremely difficult for him under any circumstances to come back for that. Uh, so absolutely, our opponent had a, a few funky plays there, but you know what, it's still it would have been extremely difficult for anyone to, to have outed that board. So let's get into game number two. All right, game number two. This is one of the games where we were indeed testing out the adventure engine and our opponent is also using the adventure engine. Uh, surprise, surprise, our opponent's gonna use Fateful Adventure to grab the Enchantress, discard the Enchantress. So you can banish it from the graveyard to grab your Rite of Aramisir. Uh, so our opponent here is gonna go for the Rite of Aramisir to grab the adventure token out of the field. Uh, because he summons out the token, he's able to grab the Drigger back from the deck, which he'll add to his hand. He's going to summon out Jet Synchron and then Link Summon into Crystron Haki Fibrax. Now, we did misplay here, uh, and it does cost us quite a lot. We Imperm the Haki Fibrax. What we should have done is we should have kept the Imperm. He already has the Jet Synchron Engrave, and I sort of, again, almost autopiloted it into the Imperm there. Uh, he's going to discard the Drigger back to summon out the Jet Synchron, and he's going to go into Aurora Dawn. We should have kept the Imperm for Aurora Dawn. So you know what, it was our first game on stream actually, so we were we were a little bit foggy, don't worry about it, it happens. But we're going to tribute two monsters here to go into the O-Lion, O-Lion's going to summon a deep Borrowed Savage Dragon. Uh, he's going to grab another token then from the O-Lion, and the Savage Dragon will equip on the Aurora Dawn from the Graveyard, giving him three tokens, meaning three negates. So not the best of scenarios for us, he's going to set one additional card face down and end his turn. So it, while it's not the most imposing board, it's definitely... Uh, we definitely did misplay a little bit. We're going to send Dark Magician Grill to the graveyard to summon Magician Souls, discard the Draco back to draw one. We were, we only discarded one because we wanted to be at the negate essentially. Uh, so now we're going to go for Soul Servant and he negates the Soul Servant, which was an interesting pick, but you know what? More power to him. Uh, then we're going to try and use the Soul Servant from the graveyard to banish to draw one, but our opponent's going to hit us with the Ash Blossom. He really doesn't want us getting any additional cards. I think from our plays so far, he's probably conceived that we may be desperate and not having a lot of plays. So we're going to discard one of our Apprentice Illusion Magicians to summon out the other. He's going to hit the one in the graveyard with Cop of the Grave. That means we don't get to search for the Dark Magician, uh, which, again, while not optimal, I would rather him hit that rather than something else, so I'm completely okay with that. He's used up pretty much all of his onboard negate, so we're going to go for Verte Anaconda to summon out DPE. So we have somewhat clawed this back here. We're going to use DP's effect to wipe out the Anaconda and the Borrowed Savage Dragon, and then we'll swing into the token. His board is effectively now cleared, so we're looking, we're, we're sitting in a very, very good position. Uh, main phase one here for our opponent. He's going to go Faithful Adventure. We're going to preemptively try to pop that card with our DPE, but we get hit with Gamma. So that is obviously not great. So our opponent's not only going to be able to resolve their uh, fateful adventure, but our monster's going to get negated and destroyed. So we no longer have that wall of defense. We're at 6k life, so it's not looking great for us here. Uh, he's going to grab the Enchantress yet again, discard the Enchantress off of that effect. Enchantress then will banish itself to grab the Red of Aramis here from the deck, not from the graveyard, which is interesting. He'll activate the Red of Aramis here to grab a token, and luckily he didn't have another extender, so we're going to survive here with 500 life points. So, while it's not great at a glance, uh, we do have DPE. However, our opponent does go into the Draco Berserker of the Tenyu. Now, this is bad. The Draco Berserker of the Tenyu is going to be a real problem. We draw into Safe, which doesn't help us a lot, I'll be perfectly honest. We're going to set Safe so we can use Celestial to draw two. Uh, it does remove the uh, attack point reduction that we were using. We're going to go for Dark Magical Circle, which gets hit with Solemn Judgment. So he pays 4,000 life to stop the circle. Again, he's really holding us back here in terms of these constant negates. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we have to use our Soul Servant. Soul Servant's going to place on top of our deck the Magician Souls. We're going to use its effect then to draw one basically from the top of the deck. Magician Souls will mill the Dark Magician to the graveyard to summon itself in defense. Its effect will send Scythe to the graveyard just to draw the rod. Rod on summon, we grabbed another circle. So I had I did misplay a little bit yet again, go figure. This was our first game on stream. Uh, so the circle, I 
believed I could have used it again at the time because the activation of it was negated by the Solid Judgment, but it, it, the text says you can only use the effects once per turn. So unfortunately, I couldn't activate the circle uh, again, which, you know, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Uh, we're going to go into Link Rebo here. We're going to swing our Magician's Rod into the Adventure Token so that he can't destroy it with his Berserker and thus end us there and then. Uh, and one final little thing we could have done to win this game. We were just hoping he didn't have a way of getting a monster, but of course he did. He has the Fateful Adventure on his field. He's going to grab the Griffin Rider and discard the O-Lion. O-Lion, when discarded, is going to grab him a token. He's going to use the token to go into Link Spider. We could have subverted this. Now, this is, is, of course, game. But what we could have done is if we had to set the circle onto our field, we could have used the DPE. It activated its effect. Yes, it would have gotten banished by the, the Draco Berserker, but we still would have been able to resolve the effect itself. We got a pop circle, pop the Draco Berserker, then we would have been able to use the effect of Link Rebo to stop the Link Spider's attack. Uh, again, it would have left us in a very desperate position, but we would have had an additional turn. It is what it is. You can tell me down below if you feel like that would have made a difference or not. Either way, unfortunate game two here. Uh, again, the adventure engine, really not the greatest. I know we didn't see a lot of it in this particular game, uh, but we did see sort of like the clogging that it was causing. Either way, we're not going to linger too much on it. We did have a few misplays in that game. It was our first game onto the stream, so we were a wee bit... Uh, still getting into the zone basically you know misplays happen so we're going to move into game number three then when we had a little bit more under our belt all right moving into game number three we are once again going first which is pretty important for this deck uh looking at the hand we don't have a lot in terms of active plays to make but we do still have some control and negation on board here our opponent's going to go for tingy spirit vishuda and he'll normal summon the red rose dragon to go into baronda fleur now this is of important interaction we're going to negate the summon of baronda fleur with the solemn judgment this has a few effects not only does it get rid of Baron de Fleur itself, it also means that now the Red Rose Dragon does not resolve because it wasn't used for a successful Synchro Summon. Uh, so he doesn't get to summon the Rock Rose Dragon of this search for the Basil Rose Shoot. So we stop not only a Baron de Fleur play, we also stop the entire Rose Dragon package. So huge, huge Solemn Judgment there. Yes, 4k life is a bit costly, but it was definitely more than worth it. He's going to go into Monk of the Tinyi here. He's not even going to issue our back row back to hand. He's just going to swing in for the 1000 like a mad lad. He's going to set one and pass it back to us. We don't know what that set card is. Could be a blackout. So what we're going to do is send the Dark Magician Girl from the deck to the graveyard. Our opponent's going to go for Max C here. So what we decide to do is instead of ashing the Max C, we're just going to let him have it. We'll let him draw one card. We're only going to summon out the Dark Magician Girl from the graveyard. And then we're just going to swing. We'll rather keep the Ash Blossom for something uh, more impactful like the Vishuda from the graveyard. Uh, sorry, the Ashuna from the graveyard if he decides to go for it. Uh, now, he does, unfortunately, have another Vishuda in hand, so this guy still has plays. He's going to summon that out, plus a Taya. He's going to banish the Monk from the Graveyard, so we're going to chain our Droplet, discarding the Dark Magician, which will boost up the attack points of the Dark Magician Girl by 300, and also negate the effect of the Taya. No token for him, so no Synchro Summoning. And he simply passes turn back to us. He is playing the Adventure version of the deck, I do believe, so he may only have one Monk of Tinyi. Uh, we're going to summon out Ash Blossom and then use it for Predator Plant Verte Anaconda. We'll pay 2k to summon out our DPE. We're looking, sort of looking a little bit desperate now with the 1k life. But you know what? We make the plays you got to make. We'll swing into the Taya to deal 1100 points of damage. Then DPE will pop the Anaconda and the back row. We can always pop the Vishido on the follow-up turn. And he probably, if he had another Monk of Tinyi, would have used it to uh, bounce us back before. So we're not too worried about it. Uh, DPE pop itself in the back row yet again. Just trying to keep his monster on the board, I suppose. Uh, into the draw phase, standby phase, resummons the uh, DPE back to the field. Then we're going to discard our Dark Magician to special summon the Illusion Magician. Uh, we'll banish the Celestial and the Dasher from the graveyard, draw two, and our opponent knows exactly where this is going, so he decides to scoop it up. So yeah, again, DPE brings a lot to this deck because it adds that sort of consistent poppage that it does for any deck, but it's, it's especially important here because most of this deck's power comes from the Circle Eternal Soul setup. In a lot of these videos, you've noticed we're not getting the Circle and Eternal Soul setup. It's not happening. So that that's sort of why we're showing the ones we're showing it's showing the importance of how you play the deck whenever your primary strategy feels so again do bear that in mind and take notes that this is not the primary strategy of the deck uh, it's just that this is a backup option if you don't get to see your primary strategy so moving away from this then we'll go into one last game here and we'll see how it plays out 
All right, moving into our last game yet again. This is the adventure engine. It was a hand like this that was sort of teaching us, you know what, maybe this I need, Chief. Uh, we're going to summon out our souls by sending the Dark Magician. The Rite of Aramisir will grab us a token and the Fateful Adventure. Magician souls will discard some of our spell cards to draw two. Drago back, of course, equipping onto the adventure token. We activate ma uh, Magician's Dark Magical Circle, sorry. We'll normal summon out the rod. We can't use its effect because we use the Rite of Aramisir, so that does slow the deck down. We're going to use uh, Verte Anaconda going into DPE here. Uh, we already drew safe, so that's why we didn't go to Dag that we didn't need to. We're going to draw into an Enchantress to discard it so we can grab a Raid of Aramis here from our graveyard just for follow-up next turn. And we're going to pass it there. Now, this is the part in here in the stream I was specifically saying most of the time you want to preactively pop your safe and your Destiny Hero Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer or even your Anaconda and your safe uh, because you want to get this safe lock up and active as soon as possible. So I decided, again, we didn't have our toggle on. We were sort of waiting. We want to see what our opponent would do. And the first thing they do is Kaiju us. So that essentially, not only does that kill our DP, I was I was not happy. Not only does that kill our DP, that also means that our safe is now pre pre pretty much useless. And our opponent's playing Numerons. Safe would have completely stopped this OTK from happening. Uh, again, we all know how this ends. I'm just going to fast forward through it. Just swings into our token here. Going to inflict a whole bunch of damage. And then swing into Anaconda for game. Even went for limit, re limit removal just to be a degenerate. And 15k to the face. So... If that is not a reason and a reminder to preactively pop your safe and DPE, then I don't know what it is. That's pretty much like that happens more than you'd think it does. So absolutely, just a quick, very very quick game, just a quick one to throw that in there. A wee bit, a wee bit of a funny moment, and as well as that, the uh, it's a reminder always pop your safe early. So let's get into the deck profile, and for anyone who doesn't know how Dark Magicians work, I'm gonna break down each card in it. Okay, so getting into the deck profile, uh, the Dark Magician deck itself, the, the primary strategy is revolving around a two-card combo of your Dark Magical Circle and your Eternal Soul, uh, as well as having at least a Dark Magician either in your hand, graveyard, field, whatever. Generally, what the Dark, uh, Dark Magical Circle does is anytime you summon a Dark Magician either the field, you banish a card your opponent controls. Eternal Soul then, apologies, Eternal Soul then uh, will once per turn during either player's turn of course has a trap card will summon a dark magician to the field so that means you can proc your circle every turn once per turn so it just it adds a lot of that sort of grind game and can be very difficult for a lot of decks to out because a well-timed banish off the circle is very very detrimental for many many decks so that's the primary strategy of the deck and how does the deck accomplish that well it plays a lot of searching and milling cards if you want to get your Dark Magician into your hand or into your graveyard, you will be using your Dark, your Magician Souls and your Apprentice Illusion Magician. Magician Souls will of course send a Dark Magician or a Dark Magician Girl from the deck to the graveyard to special summon either itself or the monster you sent to the field. So it will mill out a Dark Magician basically to your graveyard. If you already have one, you can send a Dark Magician Girl. So as well as that, if this guy's on the field, you can discard or send from your field to the graveyard two spells, up to two spells or traps, and you draw one card for each card you sent, which is phenomenal value off the back of something like your Servant and your Magician Salvation, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, so he generates a whole load of card advantage, and it helps you get your Dark Magician active in play. Apprentice Illusion Magician is a lot simpler. You discard a card to special summon her, and when she's special summoned or summoned through any means, you search your deck for a Dark Magician. Simple as that. Add it to your hand. So Apprentice Illusion Magician is phenomenal, as well as that none of her effects are once per turn. So you can effectively just, if you have multiple in hand, spam them out. Really, really helps with the Anaconda plays. So that's why we're playing her at three. I know a lot of people don't play her at all. I play her at three because she just helps you get out the Anaconda and Dagda so, so easily. So I think three Apprentice Illusion Magician, if you want to play a more aggressive combo heavy version, definitely, definitely a very, very solid card. Uh, so how are we getting to see our circle and our eternal soul? So the beginning card with that would be our Magician's Rod. On summon, search for any spell or trap card that lists the Dark Magician. That would be your circle, your soul, uh, or any of your other cards that may help draw into them. So circle uh, Rod is your main sort of normal summon, your main searching card. Uh, dark Magical Circle as well will help you when it's activated. We'll check the top three cards of your deck. If there is a Dark Magician or a related spell or trap card among those top three, you add it to your hand and you stack the other cards back on top in any order you want. So Dark Magical Circle will help you look for your missing combo pieces. Soul Servant, you place a Dark Magician or a related card on top of the deck and then you can banish it from your graveyard to draw a card 
for each Dark Magician or Dark Magician Girl with a different name. So if you have both engraved, you draw two. If you have one engraved, you draw one. Either way, you place a card on top of your deck and then you essentially draw it. Again, very, very powerful. Helps you get into your primary combo pieces. And you also have Magician Salvation. Field spell when activated, set Eternal Soul from the deck. And then you can send this from the field to the graveyard off of your Magician Souls to draw an additional card. Uh, so there's a whole load of searching, a lots of searching going on throughout the whole deck. And that's pretty much how it all works. Uh, what are the rest of the cards then? What does the rest of the deck do? Uh, the one oddball Dark Magician card here is Secrets of Dark Magic. Basically, it's a quick play fusion spell card. You will be able to fuse into your Dark Magicians. The Dark Magicians are very good in that uh, once per turn when a spell or trap is activated, you get to draw a card. So they help draw into your you know additional trap cards additional hand traps uh it's a quick play fusion spell so it's very very good at generating lethal damage you know during the battle phase you swing in with your monsters quick play fuse them to swing in the game with the fusion monster very very good for lethal plays and whenever the dark magicians are destroyed you get to summon a dark magician and a dark magician girl from either your deck or graveyard so basically it adds additional recursion if you have circle you get to banish an extra card very very powerful monster you also can technically summon Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight, if you have previously summoned Imduk. You can, I never have, but it's totally possible. Uh, you can do it. And the rest of the deck is just general interruption and negation. You, of course, have your DPE engine, your Fusion Destiny, and your Anaconda. That's just par for the course. The deck does need that uh, additional bit of interruption, so it does. Uh, you have your Artifact Scythe, which I have only recently started playing in Master Duel. I, I was appreciative of how broken it was, I just hadn't had the credits nor the attention span to go and actually use it, but now that I am using it, I love it. Uh, Artifact Scythe is very, very good in this deck as well, considering how easily you can summon DPE, so I really like that card. And then the rest of it is pretty much just standardized hand traps and traps. You've got your 2 Maxi, 2 Ash Blossom, I like running these at 2. Uh, you can totally run it at 3 if you want, I just because I don't like running hard once per turn cards at, at more than 2. Uh, so I run each of them at two. We're going to run as well two droplet. Two droplets, phenomenal. Uh, three impermanence. So we run three impermanence over two because one, very, very good at going both first and second because you can help uh, negate opponent's boards here. Uh, as well as that, it's not once per turn. So that's why I'm playing three of it. Ace Dragon's Prison, one of my favorite trap cards. Uh, you basically target a monster in your opponent's graveyard, summon it to your field, and if they have a monster in their field with the same type, you banish both. So that's amazing. You basically get to alien resources both from their field and their graveyard. And it is non-targeting, I do believe. Yeah, 100%. So non-targeting banishment. That is huge. So, so strong. Really love this card. So Solemn Judgment as well. Very, very powerful. Helps protect your back row. Helps negate big bad summons. And that particular interaction where you're using the Red Rose Dragon to go into Baron de Fleur, that interaction is going to happen a lot in the metagame. That Tinyi Adventure deck is very, very popular and very, very powerful. That is their ideal turn one play. So having a card that is built specifically to stop their ideal turn one play is phenomenal. So Solemn Judgment, amazing card, especially in the current metagame. And yeah, pretty much that is just the gist of it. All of the extra deck cards, most of which are optional. And you have your Link Spider and your Imduke, which will turn your uh, Dark Magician into an effect monster just to do some Link Summoning. They're only here for that purpose. Uh, Link Rebo, just to summon off of your souls. Again, additional uh, summon. Uh, we have All Mirage, which you can totally replace with something. This was more relevant when we were playing the other version. So you can take All Mirage out and put in something like perhaps uh, Cerberus. Whatever it is you want to play. Uh, again, Phoenix, generic, pop a back row, Mascarina. Mascarina is genuinely pretty good, pretty good in this deck because you can summon out an indestructible Avra Max or Access Code Talker, sometimes an Apollosa. So uh, Mascarina is really, really strong, especially considering during your opponent's turn, you'll be resummoning monsters from the graveyard. So with your Eternal Soul, you can resummon a Dark Magician during their turn. And then that will give you the resources necessary for a unicorn play, even if, if you ended your turn with just the Mask Arena. Eternal Soul, you'll banish one, plus you'll have the materials for a return one off of Unicorn, so a very, very strong play. Uh, Dagda and Anaconda for the safe and TPE engines, and Unicorn we've talked about. 
So yeah, it's pretty much as simple as that. The deck isn't super, super complicated. It's not broken. It's not super ridiculously strong. As you can see from the gameplay, it is a little bit slow at times, but playing it like this helps compensate for that particular issue and helps you get your combos and boards going. So that's pretty much all I have to say on it. Again, if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed and you enjoy what you're seeing, why not? You know, it's completely free. It really helps me out and I'd really appreciate it. Uh, and as well as that, you can jump into the Discord where we're going to be announcing the growth of the channel, especially on our platforms, including uh, Twitch uh, alerts as well will be going onto the Discord. So if you want to get involved with that, by all means, jump on in there. And that pretty much wraps it up for me. So I will see you all in the next one.